okay, I guess it's it hi, really... Angie. Yeah, hi, Upatisa, you're here. <laughs> Good to see you. First time you're joining? Yes. Uh, other Upatisa is from, from another cell group, our Pante Punaji cell group. Okay. Good to see you here. All right, uh, maybe we can start since everybody has introduced. Do you want to Sugiwoto and good evening everyone. Welcome to MSDS Weekly Guided Meditation by Sago. Today is the 26th of October 2021. We are very grateful to have with us Pante Adipalo, popularly known as Prago. Pante was born on July 14, 1985 and was ordained in 2008. Pante is currently the religious advisor to Buddhist Youth Network Singapore and has been conducting MSBS weekly to take a meditation since last year. Pante will be leading the homage to the Buddha and taking a five precepts for Buddhists. Now let us compose our minds, power palms together and welcome Pante. Over to you Pante. Okay, uh, thank you Terence for the introduction. <coughs> Okay, so I start off with the <coughs> homage. Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambhutatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambhutatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambhutatsa and the three refuges Bhutam Saranam Gachami Tamam Saranam Gachami Sankam Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Bhutam Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Sankang Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Bhutang Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Sankham Saranam Gachami <coughs> And five precepts Panatipata Viramadi Sikapada Samadhyami Adinadana Viramadi Sikapada Samadhyami Kame su vichajara veramani sikha padang samadhi yami Musavada veramani sikha padang samadhi yami Sura mirya manja pamadatana veramani sikha padang samadhi yami Okay, so uh, good evening everyone. We shall continue with this uh, series. This is the second week. Uh, last week we started on this uh, Siga Lovada Sutta and uh, it's basically the blueprint you know, for a sort of lay person's conduct if you want to improve on your ethics and morality. So this is like the guideline, uh, the lifestyle, interpersonal relations. So you think, hey, what is this going to do with meditation? Uh, yes, yes, uh, everything to do with meditation uh, because if your lifestyle is affected, then your <coughs> mind state will be affected. Your thought processes, your mood, your emotions, it will affect uh, this uh, Thoughts. Yeah? So meditation is not about just sitting, it's about your everyday behavior. 
your lifestyle. So basically this covers uh, the ethical aspect. So we are not running a very circular kind of meditation workshop and just sit down and meditate and what you do after that is your business. No, and this one is uh, uh, also a lifestyle advice, very holistic. Uh, and of course, I'm not imposing on you that you must do this, uh, but it's good. Now, I deal that uh, trying to uh, follow certain uh, guidelines. All right, next. <coughs> so, I talked about the uh, precepts and the four vices uh, we should avoid. Right? It's killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying. And we also covered on these uh, intoxicants. Although it's not mentioned here as one of the uh, vices to singular, it's later mentioned later. Not just uh, drinking, but a few other kinds of vice activities. Next. <clears throat> so this is the state of mind before one commits any action. If it's uh, <coughs> rooted right, in either greed, hatred, or uh, delusion, or even fear, then uh, it's advisable to take a step back and reconsider, think twice before you carry them out or you speak. Um, so uh, next. So we covered briefly on uh, wealth management. Right? So down here we talk for free, we don't charge money <laughs> on uh, wealth advice. So. I'm like a temporary wealth uh, guru. So the Buddha also taught this 2,500 years ago on uh, how to be wealthy. Right? How to be wealthy. So first, get rid of these uh, bad habits. Right? So we move on. <coughs> yeah, so these are the six consequences of taking intoxicants, so that's why this is included in the fifth precept, yeah, because once a person is not sober, then they will intentionally or unintentionally, you know, break the other precepts, yeah, and uh, not good for a mind, you cannot meditate when your uh, mind is uh, blurred or not sober, so this is uh, advice, and try not to take there's alcohol, and somebody mentioned, what if it's an, in a form of medication, you know, like cough syrup, got alcohol, and there were no problem, yeah? if it's a medication to, to treat your illness, no issues, we're talking about uh, drinking for like leisure, or drinking to you know, drown your sorrows, uh, so if it's not uh, beneficial medically, and you just uh, drink, then I think it's uh, harmful. I mean, it's creating harm for yourself, not just emotionally, but also physically. Okay, next. Okay, so this is something new uh, for this uh, today's lesson. <coughs> uh, not to saunter in the streets at unseemly hours. Not because it's the pandemic, but uh, even if there's no pandemic, uh, no, there are uh, these uh, negative setbacks if a person were to you know, enjoy hanging around in uh, untimely hours and night especially, unless your job is uh, you know, to uh, have this night shift, maybe a guard or whatever it is, a night shift, or you're doing uh, this uh, firefighting duty or whatever it is, no, you need to you know, stand by. But if it's uh, you're not doing any particular livelihood and you are just hanging around, then uh, you might get into trouble. Yeah, so we are going to just briefly read through the six points. Uh, he or she is unprotected and unguarded. That's number one. So if let's say a uh, place has a crime, um, Normally, right, criminals will operate at night. Lah, huh? So, if you hang around at night, then this is the uh, uh, risk you'll be uh, taking. And number two, his wife, 
or his spouse and children are unprotected and unguarded. So this was 2,500 years ago. So uh, they would treat the men as uh, you know, something like the breadwinner and the protector of the family. So in the modern times, uh, nowadays people talk about gender equality. So hard to say, yeah? some uh, females are maybe alpha females or whatever label you call it. Um, take up uh, this self defense and whatever, not so, um, right? So, the whole idea is to stay home with your family, right? If you finish your work, uh, spend quality time with your family, very important. Uh, so, if a person hangs around too late outside, or especially for entertainment, and neglect their families, then it's uh, we say there's a give and take, although you might have a short, temporary kind of enjoyment, we call this instant gratification, but at the long run, right, uh, you have lots of problems with the people you are staying over the long run, and uh, you have lots of quarrels, and who knows even uh, when the relationship go down, turns sour, and you have all the breakups and uh, more problems. Okay, and three, his uh, property is unprotected and unguarded. Uh, so if you are at home, uh, again, uh, if, let's say even if you are single, right, there's uh, less likely uh, you get a uh, burglar. Yeah, there's uh, less chances of burglary, especially if they know your uh, person at home. Okay, and number four, he is suspected of evil deeds. I right, say so if you hang out uh, late at night again, uh, you may uh, run into trouble. Right, if there is a certain uh, crime or certain rumor, right, the next point is subject to false rumors on certain uh, crime scene happening. And if you are at that area, right, you and you are unlucky, yeah? you sway sway, you go just walk past that street or that lane where certain crime taken place and you are suspected as well. And uh, number six, he meets with many troubles. Right, so these are the six uh, negative points with a person saunter late at unseemly hours. Right, so uh, Nowadays, because of this pandemic, we hold <coughs> classes in uh, Zoom. I remember last time, uh, in Singapore, there are many of these uh, Buddhist centers at the uh, Red Light District area. At this Gala, Red Light District area. So last time, the Dhamma talks also at the evening, night time. So you know, we need to go and uh, listen to Dhamma talks at night. And hence, maybe 9 or 10 p.m. at night, then you walk around there, <laughs> come out of the center, walk around that lane, and people will think, hey, what are you doing in Geylang? <laughs> right, so, uh, now it's good to have a talk over Zoom. Eh? Okay, next. <clears throat> um, next one. Eh? Six evil consequences in frequenting theatrical shows. So that was, again, 2,500 years ago. Uh, there's no Netflix, no uh, YouTube. So if a person is uh, <coughs> too addicted to these uh, theatrical shows, and, and especially at night, right, they will end up with the six consequences of the previous one, sauntering in the streets. But even if they don't saunter in the streets at night, let's say they attend some afternoon show or in the morning show, um, right? They will be addicted to uh, too much of this, right? So there's nothing wrong as a lay person if a person uh, masters arts. It's mentioned in this uh, Mangala Sutta, one of the 38 uh, highest blessings is to master an art craft as a layperson, yeah, they can appreciate certain cultural uh, aspects. So even like the <coughs> formulation of the uh, suttas, the scriptures, or uh, 
uh, certain disciples of the Buddha, when they give sermon, they can arrange the sermon in, in the form of a poem when they speak. So there, there are certain pros in understanding uh, certain disciplines, you know, like uh, theatre and art, uh, but what they mention is frequenting theatrical shows. If your person is addicted, then this one will promote too much uh, greed and clinging. Too much greed and clinging. <clears throat> so there is a difference uh, between a musician and an artist watching a show versus a non-musician, non-artist watching a show. The person, the musician, let's say listening to music, won't enjoy the music as how a non-musician would enjoy a music. Yeah, a non-musician will have other kinds of fantasies and, and whatever added to uh, sugarcoat and make the performance look nice in the mind. Whereas, like a musician, when they listen to music, they will break up into uh, the different uh, notes and the different uh, melody and different whatever it is, eh? the different scales or whatever music theory they, they learned before. So, um, <coughs> there, there is a difference. Eh? Okay, so uh, again, it's uh, individual case by case basis. So, these are the six kinds of uh, drawbacks, right? Where is the dancing? Where is the singing? Where is the music? Where is the recitation? Where is the playing of, with symbols? Where is their pot blowing? So these are probably uh, ancient musical instruments. Right? So nowadays, uh, who knows, maybe there's uh, electrical musical equipment, uh, maybe rock music or electric keyboard or whatever it is. So, um, so these are just examples. So if you bring to modern context, any melody, any note that uh, makes you, oh, makes your mind addicted to that uh, sound or that uh, performance, that image in your mind, oh, this person, uh, you can replay the scene over and over again, it brings you nice feelings, then uh, not so good. Eh? So, again, I would uh, break it into a uh, more specific kind of uh, unwholesome or wholesome kind of state of mind. If let's say uh, you've already been uh, meditating and you've experienced you say, certain spiritual happiness, spiritual joy, and let's say you listen to a certain music or watch a certain play, and that can inspire you, you know, inspire you and you have uh, certain joy or happiness or peace from that moment then you have to know, know for yourself whether is it wholesome or unwholesome but if it just leads you to addiction and you want more and you want more uh, then that is unwholesome kind of happiness yeah unwholesome happiness that's craving it's like a mosquito bite mosquito itch uh, if you scratch the itch and you feel itchy, you want to scratch again. And so it doesn't solve the problem. So whereas uh, there's another kind of uh, pleasant way of solving the itch is to you know, apply the medication, the cooling kind of medication on the itch and uh, swell will subside and you stop the itch. So there is a different kind of happiness yeah, from ending this uh, itch. So, uh, it's just an analogy. So likewise, if any kind of entertainment, any kind of contact, so be it uh, visual contact or uh, hearing kind of contact, or whatever entertainment you are sort of watching, uh, as a layperson, that's why there's this uh, eight precepts. If you are more serious, then we have the eight precepts. You know, not to even watch or uh, listen to this uh, music and watch this entertainment, right? Uh, this is to play safe. But uh, if let's say your five precepts, you're living with your family members you know, who want to watch maybe a family show together, 
or uh, in your workplace, you know, somebody needs to turn on the music in the office, it's a shared space, then uh, you need to watch your mind, yeah? You need to apply this uh, right thought, right contemplation, and uh, you just treat it as a sound element, sound contact, or this uh, visual contact. Yeah? Okay, next. Ah, so the next uh, vice <coughs> activity is this uh, gambling. Yeah, gambling. So earlier on we talked about uh, intoxicants. I think equally harmful is also gambling. Yeah, but uh, these are not added inside the precepts. Huh? Uh, but possible, try not to uh, get hooked into gambling. So I'm not sure in uh, Malaysia, uh, in Singapore, there's this like uh, gambling hotline. If a person is addicted to gambling, they can call for help. But I'm not sure how, how much is being utilized. Um, okay, so there are six points. Number one, the winner, uh, Baggett's hate. Uh, so uh, if you keep winning or if you win too much, uh, the people who lose will dislike you. Uh, and number two, the loser grieves for loss of wealth. Uh, so if you are at the losing end, then you get upset. <coughs> and uh, number three, the loss of wealth. Number four, his word is not relied upon in a court of law. Likewise, for the uh, some of the few <coughs> past uh, activities we talked about, like let's say you're drunk or if you uh, saunter too late in the streets. <coughs> and the five, he is despised by his friends and associates. Uh, so if you keep gambling and you keep losing money, what will happen is, if you are still addicted, the next moment you meet your friends or your colleagues, you'll ask for money. You need money to you know, place the next bet. I'm just addicted, or you have this uh, delusion, no, to have a hope that uh, you win something to uh, recuperate the losses, <coughs> right? So uh, it's a uh, gamble itself. So whenever you approach anybody, you know, your friends or close relatives that know that you gamble, they'll run away from you. Right? So this is uh, instant uh, isolation. Wherever you go, it's <laughs> a field of isolation and people will run. Okay, and uh, next one. He is not sought after for matrimony. So last time uh, in the ancient days, there's lots of matchmaking. So if the other party, the, uh, the spouse, the parents know that you are a gambler, uh, they will not you know, give their, they will not consent to the marriage. Yeah? Okay, so these are the six uh, pointers. Okay, so I believe uh, <coughs> most religions uh, do not promote uh, gambling. Right, so this is, uh, I think, a universal uh, social problem everywhere. You know, across all geographical locations, all cultures, uh, gambling will lead to problems. Okay, next. And next one, yes, yeah? associating with evil companions. So sometimes uh, a person will not engage in all those uh, the past activities we mentioned earlier, but it is due to peer pressure. Peer pressure. If you mix with friends who are gamblers, and the only thing they talk about is gambling. If you mix around with uh, people who are are drunks, yeah, who like to drink alcohol, then they will just ask you to join them to the bar, uh, to the place, uh, to another place to drink. So this is the only thing they talk about. And uh, that's why we try not to associate. Uh, sometimes the term is a bit strong, uh, evil companions. Um, we, I think the better term would be unwholesome companions. Yeah unwholesome companions. 
Okay, so number one, uh, first group is any gambler. <clears throat> okay, so sometimes we may not find a perfect person, a person with all the virtues. Sometimes they may have a bit of uh, no certain bad habits here and there, but if they're overall like generally okay, uh, you can join them in the okay activities. Yeah? But once they start talking about these uh, we call vices, then you can avoid them or firmly say uh, no. Huh? Okay, so first one, gambler. Number two, <coughs> uh, libertine. Yeah, one devoid of moral restraints. Uh, that means they do things as they please without considering uh, these uh, moral consequences. Okay, and number three, any kind of drunkard. Number four, any swindler. Yeah. Number five, any swindler and cheat is the same, right? But I mentioned different category. Uh, any cheat. And number six, any rowdy is his friend and companion. So any rowdy group of people. So these are the six kinds of uh, companions that uh, you try to avoid. Right? If they are uh, rowdy, uh, they might uh, pick fights or get in trouble or get you into trouble. So it's uh, avoid uh, this kind of people. Okay, and uh, any swindler, any cheat, so you know they are not honest, not truthful. So anything they ask, any favors from you, uh, you probably know it's uh, not safe. Okay, um, next slide. And next one is laziness or pros uh, procrastination. So not just in your work, uh, but also in uh, meditation. Yeah, some people say, I have no time to meditate. Uh, so there are six uh, kinds of excuses. One is uh, too hot or too cold. Too cold, cannot meditate. And the next one, too hot, cannot meditate. Too late, also cannot meditate. And the next one, too early, cannot meditate. Huh? And it's uh, too hungry, so I cannot meditate. And the last one, too full. Right? So these are like the six excuses uh, if you procrastinate. So this is with regards to wealth. Yeah? So if you want to be like a trader, entrepreneur, uh, you need to uh, <clears throat> be very hardworking, or even if you are an employee, right? there is like certain work hours in your office, on your workplace, uh, you need to work at the proper work timings. Yeah? So uh, these are the six excuses. So like for meditation, we know we try to uh, maintain mindfulness as long as we are awake. So it's not uh, regardless of uh, these consequences. Uh, and of course, one more advice, uh, not to eat until too full uh, before the <laughs> Uh, guided meditation. If you are too full, all the blood will rush to the digestive system and you'll end up probably sleeping instead of uh, meditating. And we talked about uh, in the previous series on the Sabha Sutta on tolerance. If it's too cold, too hot, then it's also a condition uh, to practice, right? Uh, to tolerate the weather. Uh, I'm not asking you to deliberately uh, torture yourself. No, put your hand in the oven or put your uh, put some nitrogen, liquid nitrogen on yourself. No, huh? so this is about um, tolerating you know, weather conditions as much as possible. Okay, and uh, I'm going to end the sharing here for today and open the floor for questions and answers. Anyone? 
or anybody has uh, any points they can relate in their workplace or in their daily lives. Okay. Yeah. Does telling white lies have evil consequences? <clears throat> telling white lies, I, I think it will depend on the context or the specific uh, case by case basis. Um, but if possible, yeah, first try uh, not to tell the lies. Um, in, in fact, there are like several conditions for uh, we call right speech or proper time to speak. Uh, so first is you need to tell the truth, whether it's the truth or not. Um, so if it's not the truth, uh, then you can delay or give like another answer. If possible, huh? okay. Then second is um, right time. Is it the right time to speak? And the three is it beneficial or not beneficial? Uh, is it uh, helpful or not helpful? And uh, number four is uh, your motivation or intention when you want to say something, uh, be it the so-called. Uh, white lie or not, what's your motivation or intention? Is it there uh, to help the person or is it to cheat? Yeah? Uh, so if it's to help the person, uh, like sometimes you like to give the scenario the person on the deathbed and they want you to promise something. So uh, no, that is like, uh, uh, I would say one of the extreme kind of scenarios uh, where you, you know sort of have to allay the anxiety so you won't just say anything to allay the anxiety to, you know to make them uh, sort of pass in, pass away peacefully right so uh, this is also uh, important yeah, to know what's the context okay thank you yeah thank you how about uh, people who borrow money because I encountered uh, previous ex-colleagues and friends who borrowed money but when the time come to pay you never see them so oh, okay. is, uh, is, is it classified under uh, cheating yeah yeah one of the unwholesome uh, companions yeah, so initially we may not know that out of uh, goodwill out of friendship we, we sort of or lend them the money then uh, after that uh, you see they are doing well it's not that they are broke or anything then they don't want to return <laughs> return the money yeah? so uh, you know they are not truthful or not honest so at least you know their, their character yeah? okay uh, anything else anyone Okay, so today's uh, tips is on how to save up your uh, wealth. Don't any else spend on these uh, vices. Uh, be hardworking, don't procrastinate. And uh, you can avoid yourself you not know, getting into trouble. Okay, so that's it. Um, if there's no other question, about the comments on Facebook. No, nothing. Okay, then we go for this. Uh, five minute break. Uh, along the way, you can think of the questions, uh, relief and self stretch for stretching, and come back at uh, 9904 909. Alright, see you back later.
say that some question at the Facebook. Oh, okay. Put in the chat. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to read <clears throat> this question. Hi, Bante. Does doing good deeds help us in wealth? Uh, yes, and in one of the very, very previous series on uh, karma, yeah, the uh, shorter discourse on karma, uh, we talked about uh, your person is uh, wealthy, and yeah? the, one of the causes is because uh, they practice generosity. Yeah, so uh, of course sometimes uh, these things can be taken out of context and uh, people think, oh, okay, just uh, give you to, huh? then you'll be uh, physically wealthy. Uh, that's not true, right? Uh, if a person practices generosity in the immediate cause or the immediate uh, effect would be uh, mental wealth, mental detachment. You get less and less selfish, so that is uh, the inner kind of wealth. Yeah, so external wealth uh, depends on the workings of karma, which is very unpredictable. But the more predictable uh, way of earning the wealth is again following the advice of this Sigalovada Sutta, and maybe in future uh, we can talk about this uh, Diga Janu Sutta uh, or another Sutta on financial planning. Okay, um, and the next, yeah, doing meditation does it help make you wealthy? Uh, yes, if you are more contented, right? Uh, let's say you, your mind is always in, let's say, in Samadhi or always uh, in detachment, you won't. Uh, want to get yourself addicted no, to all those vices. So definitely it will uh, help you. <coughs> okay, um, next one. Hi Bhante, second question. May I check if doing dhanas such as giving alms around to venerables are considered as good deeds? Uh, generally, yes, the main thing is your intention. If your intention is uh, wholesome, then uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, and next, uh, oh, no question. Okay, that's it. Anything else from the floor? No, everyone okay? All right, uh, so now we're going to practice uh, meditation to improve your inner wealth. So, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, the Buddha mentioned to the uh, his monks, yeah. How do uh, what is the wealth of monks? <clears throat> and said it's this uh, loving kindness or the four sublime states. So that is the wealth of the the monastics. So if your mind is always uh, boundless, expanded. And you have everything. If your mind is very narrow, very selfish, very greedy, then everything is not enough. All right. Okay. Um, we are going to start. Maybe we can yeah all turn off the microphones. Find a comfortable <coughs> sitting position. Make sure your back is upright and the rest of the body relaxed. Okay, so the first phase of meditation is uh, the Visualization of the impurities of the body. We are going to first visualize the hairs. We are going to wish all the hairs well and happy from head to toe. So 
every mental contact, yeah, we wish and the image well and happy. So now this is just a controlled setting, controlled kind of training in the actual life. Yeah, some people may imagine or visualize certain entertainment they may be addicted to. So we start off with something neutral. We wish the mental image well and happy. So we do this from head to toe. Every time we think of a new patch of hair, we wish it well and happy. And this loving kindness is to reduce aversion. A lot of times we may have this thought, I want to get rid of certain unwholesome thought. Yeah. So the approach may or the strategy may not be so correct to remove unwholesome, let's say imagery. So we use loving kindness first, be at peace with these formations. And once you have wished the entire hair well and happy, then the mind is more embracing yeah, to accept the truth. So all these hairs go through birth, aging, sickness and passing away. Think of all the hairs growing and falling, growing and falling, many cycles of birth and death. Uh, no need to over dramatize or over imagine. You now, like how you shower, how you comb your hair, yeah, no need. Just uh, hairs growing and falling. So just like any exercise, if you do it correctly, uh, you should get the correct symptoms, correct results. So if you have applied loving kindness yeah, to soften <coughs> uh, the mind and followed by impermanence, uh, if there's a reduction of craving, then uh, you should experience either this inner joy or inner peace. But if, let's say the more you meditate, the more stressful, the more tension, the more anxiety, uh, that means uh, something is wrong, you missed out certain technique, certain steps, and do the normal troubleshooting SOP, yeah, do loving kindness first, uh, followed by this uh, impermanence.
and we can question ourselves, are these hairs truly self? Can you tell the hairs not to go through birth and death? And next we can visualize the nails, fingernails and toenails. May they be well and happy. And all these nails go through birth, aging, sickness and passing away. And think of the nails growing and falling, growing and falling, many, many cycles. And all I guess to familiarize with this state of mind or this emotion of detachment. And we always use this as a reference point. And uh, every time you detach further, or every time you improve, the uh, depth of peace will be very different. And you always use your high score and this. The most peaceful one is your reference. And any activity that causes you to lose your peace a lot and uh, that would be dukkha, yeah? you cause tension and you'll be more sensitive to this uh, stress or suffering. The more you dwell in this state of calm or peace, uh, it's a kind of reprogramming your philosophy of life and to engage in activities that will maintain or uphold this peace. So it's uh, called it living in accordance with the Dharma.
Here and then we can question ourselves, are these nails truly self? Can you tell the nails not to go through birth and death? And next we can visualize the teeth or the teeth inside the mouth. May they be well and happy. And all these teeth are subject to birth, aging, sickness and passing away. So we think of the bone cells. And bone cells are teeth. They keep growing and falling, growing and falling, wear and tear all the time and think of the birth and death cycles of these bone cells many many times And then we can ask ourselves, are these teeth truly self? Can we tell the teeth not to go through birth and death? And next we can think of the skin. We wish all the skin well and happy from head to toe. And every time we think of a new patch of skin, we repeat and wish it well and happy.
and all the skin go through birth, aging, sickness, and passing away. So you think of a uh, birth and death of skin, yeah. skin growing, skin falling, skin growing, skin falling, many, many cycles. We can ask ourselves, are they skin, truly self? Can we tell the skin not to go through birth and death? If you are less attached to your skin, then you buy less uh, skin products. Yeah? Likewise with the hair and teeth. Okay, uh, next we can move on to the second phase of meditation, which is the four sublime states. So for this routine, there is uh, no need to visualize. Yeah, we use the uh, sense of feel, we feel the sensations, and we are going to uh, start off with wishing all beings in front well and happy. So whatever sensation you detect in front, you wish it well and happy. So this one doesn't need to imagine. Yeah? This is. Uh, real-time observation. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish me all beings behind well and happy. We come back to ourselves. Next, we wish all beings on the left well and happy. And we 
come back to ourselves and we wish all beings on the right well and happy and we come back to ourselves And we can wish all beings above well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And we wish all beings below well and happy. And we come back to ourselves. And this time round, we just fill the entire body with loving kindness. And we wish all sensations in our body well and happy. So uh, these sensations can be generally classified into the four elements. So the earth, fire, wind, water elements. Earth uh, represents hard and soft sensations. Fire is the warm and cold sensations. Wind, fast and slow movements. And water, moist or dry sensations. So the whole idea is to uh, not control these elements, not to deliberately generate them, not to hold on and not to reject them. Yeah? Let them arise by itself and we treat them as passerby. Whenever a new sensation arises, we wish it well and happy. And we keep repeating this loving kindness to all or any sensations that arise. And once we have reached this entire body well and happy, all the elements well and happy, we can take note of this uh, baseline emotion. And without entering any kind of concentration, what is this uh, loving kindness like? So this uh, mindfulness of the four elements will lead to this uh, <coughs> mindfulness of state of mind. So when you have loving kindness, that is the mind of non-aversion. Yeah. 
and how to have this mind of non-delusion. It is to reflect on impermanence. And so every sensation that arises, you just observe how it arises and how it disappears, how it arises and how it passes away. So it is not just intellectualizing, right? You have the evidence and the proof which is your observation and you need a reflection on impermanence to convert this observation into wisdom. The state of mind on this uh, path to non-delusion is uh, very similar to all kinds of meditation objects we will lead to either inner joy or inner calm. Yeah? So it's like the sign that you're on the right track. But every time there's uh, tension, there's uh, stress or anxiety, uh, then you must know what kind of state of mind you have. Is it a mind of greed, a mind of aversion? And once we have this as a baseline, uh, then we can start to expand the mind. Yeah, we wish all beings in all directions, may they be well and happy. So just a gentle wish, no need to uh, push the mind. Let the mind extend itself naturally. So if it gets like a bigger area, we call this the expanded mind. Compared to the restricted mind within the confines of the body. And within that field of attention, however big is your mind, uh, within this field of attention, whatever sensation arises, you wish it well and happy. So all beings in that field of attention is your universe. Yeah? So again, this is a moment to moment, real time evidence. No need to visualize. Yeah? And we imagine we have no idea you know, how many beings are there in this world. So we just use the real time. Uh, these elements, it can be inside the body, outside the body, it doesn't matter. As long as sensation arises, we should be well and happy. So all beings, all formations, all uh, thought concepts of these beings, uh, may they be well and happy.
and the more loving kindness you generate, and the calmer the mind will get. So this is the uh, paradox of skillful thinking. You need to keep thinking of skillful thoughts for the mind to have this samadhi. So samadhi cannot be achieved by no thinking. Eh? And this is developing loving kindness through <coughs> samatha, through concentration. And next, we are adding some insight into this uh, reflection. And we are going to think of uh, how to develop an unconditional kind of loving kindness, uh, regardless of changing of beings. How to have this, uh, this same kind of goodwill towards them. So all sensations, all formations, all beings go through birth and death, rising and passing, rising and passing all the time. And the focus is on the impermanence. All the emotions, all the sensations, no matter how pleasant, how peaceful, we treat them as passerby. So you can remember this state of mind. Uh, this is the combination of both samatha and vipassana, concentration and insight. And we're moving on to the second sublime state, which is compassion. And we are going to wish all beings, may they be free from suffering. 
So any sensation arise, any thought formation, concepts of all beings, we wish them free from suffering. And no need to over-imagine, we just use the here and now sensations. So in this control setting, we uh, practice compassion in the sort of more uh, pure form. We don't have to think about worrying on how to help the other party. Sometimes too much worrying can lead to uh, this draining, burnout and depression. So we can skip all this part. We just keep on generating the initial compassion all the time. And even for unwholesome companions, some people want to practice, and like be a bodhisattva, want to save unwholesome people. Uh, you need to first learn yeah, how to recharge yourself. So the middle way, compassion should be quite pleasant, quite uh, peaceful. It is not sorrowful or depressing kind of emotion. This is uh, compassion through concentration. Yeah, you can remember the state of mind. And next we can add some wisdom, some insight, and reflect on how to truly overcome this suffering. We need to practice detachment to all the sensations, think of impermanence, all beings, all sensations, they come and go.
applying for uh, impermanence. All experiences are passing sceneries and there's byproducts. can familiarize yourself with this state of mind. This is a combination of uh, concentration and insight using compassion. Next, we can have this appreciative joy. And we wish uh, all beings, may they not be separated from what they have achieved. So basically, every moment-to-moment -moment sensations, they are new experience gained. Yeah? You achieve something. So it can be joys and all this moment-to-moment -moment sensation And when the mind calms down, uh, you can remember the state of mind. This is uh, appreciative joy with concentration using samatha. Next, we can add some insight or wisdom and reflect all beings will be separated from all that is near and appealing to oneself. And so all these sensations, all beings will uh, come and go, arise and pass away, arise and pass away. So we maintain uh, this state of mind, be it standing, sitting, walking or lying down, most mindful of uh, wholesome thoughts and also mindful of impermanence. And with that in mind, we can 
and gently open our eyes and sort of formally end the session. <coughs> Okay, any problems from anyone? So if you feel more contented, do you feel like spending money? Okay, this is for yourself to observe. Okay, so uh, try to maintain uh, this wholesome mind, contented mind, and you check your savings next time. Eh? <laughs> Okay, um, so if there's no other issues, then we can end uh, the session. Any chant? <coughs> okay, so the dedicating of merits. Akasata japumata devanagama hitika Punyang tang alumoditwa, Chirang rakang to loka sasana, Etawata cha amehi, Sampadang punya sampadang, Sabi deva, Sabi puta, Sabi sata alumodan to, Sampa sampa de sit here. Transference of merits to departed. Ida vinya tina ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo Ida vinya tina ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo Ida vinya tina ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo Aspiration Imina punya kamena Mami bhava samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu Yamani bhana patiya Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. All right, uh, so that's the end. Any announcements from Terence? No one day. Okay, you all next not. Week. Okay, see you all next week and uh, good night. Thank you, Mante. Thank you, Mante. Good night. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, sadhu, good night.